My boyfriend treats me really well, and I'm not used to it. I love it, but I'm afraid I'll take advantage of it. It's 7, 23 AM. When the soft chime of my phone wakes me up. I groggily turn over, already anticipating a flood of unread work emails or reminders about everything I should have done yesterday but didn't. But instead, the screen lights up with a text from Ethan. He's left me a message morning, sunshine. Hope you slept well. Got your coffee waiting downstairs. You're gonna crush today. I blink a couple of times, trying to process the fact that I've somehow found myself dating a man who not only remembers how I like my coffee but actually gets up early enough to make it for me and sends me an encouraging text before I even open my eyes. This is new. Way too new. I stare at the message, a little dazed, and there's that flutter in my chest again the one that makes me both giddy and scared at the same time. I toss the covers off and head downstairs, where I know I'll find him in the kitchen, grinning like he's just won the lottery because he managed to brew my coffee exactly right. Again. Don't get me wrong, I adore the attention, the care, and the love. But after years of dating guys who treated me like an afterthought, this is uncomfortable. Part of me feels like I don't deserve it, and the other part the part I'm less proud of is afraid I'll start expecting it. What if I become one of those people who takes advantage of someone's kindness? Or worse, what if I get so used to this that I forget how to appreciate it? Morning. Ethan's voice pulls me out of my spiraling thoughts. He's standing in front of the stove, flipping pancakes like he's some kind of gourmet chef, with his disheveled hair and goofy smile. It's ridiculous how effortlessly charming he is. Morning, I mumble, rubbing my eyes and taking a seat at the kitchen island. There it is a steaming cup of coffee, just how I like it. I sip it, and for a moment, I let myself enjoy the warmth, the sweetness, the calm before the inevitable chaos of the day. You okay? Ethan asks, sliding a plate of pancakes in front of me. His blue eyes are full of that genuine concern that still takes me by surprise every time. I'm not used to someone looking at me like that as if what I feel actually matters. Yeah, yeah. I'm good, I reply, plastering on a smile that I hope convinces him. But he sees right through it. You sure? You seem distracted, he presses, leaning against the counter with his arms crossed, waiting for me to be honest with him. There it is again. That gentle persistence that makes me want to scream because it's so unfamiliar. The men I used to date didn't ask questions like this. They didn't really ask questions at all, unless it was to complain about something or demand something else. I force another smile. Just thinking about work, that's all. It's half true. Work is stressful, but what's really eating at me is how much I'm falling for this guy. And how terrified I am of ruining it. He doesn't push any further, which is another thing I'm not used to space. It's like he knows when to let me have a moment without me asking for it. It's unsettling in the best way. A few weeks into our relationship, I had one of those breakdowns you know, the kind where you're overwhelmed by life, and suddenly, everything is just too much. I remember sitting on my couch, tears streaming down my face, ranting about my job, my family, my messy apartment, and how my life was just a disaster. I expected Ethan to give me the classic it'll be okay speech and then move on, maybe suggest we grab dinner to distract me. But instead, he listened. Like, really listened. He didn't try to fix anything or give me advice I didn't ask for. He just sat there, holding my hand and nodding, letting me vent until I ran out of words. And then, when I was done, he said something that stuck with me. You don't have to have everything figured out. You're doing your best, and that's enough. I don't know why, but hearing that made me cry even harder. Maybe because no one had ever said that to me before. Or maybe because I didn't believe it myself, but he did. I snap back to the present as Ethan kisses the top of my head and tells me he's going to get ready for work. I nod, sipping my coffee, my mind spinning in a thousand directions. It's not that I don't trust him. I do, more than I've ever trusted anyone. But I'm scared. Scared that one day, I'll wake up and realize that I've taken advantage of all the little things he does for me. Scared that I'll start to expect the coffee, the pancakes, the pep talks, without appreciating the effort behind them. And what if I become someone who needs that kind of attention to feel okay? What if I lose the independence I've worked so hard to build? I can't let that happen. Later that night, after a long day of back-to-back -back meetings and deadlines, I get home, exhausted. I kick off my shoes and collapse onto the couch, feeling the weight of the day pressing down on me. My phone buzzes, and I see another message from Ethan got dinner waiting for you. Figured you might need it after today. See you soon. I can't help but smile. He just knows. He always knows. When I get to his place, the smell of something delicious hits me as soon as I open the door. Ethan's in the kitchen again, chopping vegetables and humming along to some old song I don't recognize. I watch him for a moment, leaning against the doorway, and I feel a pang of guilt. I don't do this for him. 
I don't cook or plan or make sure his favorite things are ready for him. It's not that I don't care I do, more than I can say but it just doesn't occur to me in the same way it does to him. And that's what scares me. You're amazing, you know that? I say, walking over to him. He laughs, that deep, warm laugh that I love. I try, he says, but there's no arrogance in his voice. He means it, in the simplest way. He tries, because he cares. We sit down to dinner, and as we talk about our day, I can't help but wonder if he ever feels the same way I do if he's ever afraid that I'm not giving him as much as he's giving me. Or if he even thinks about it at all. Maybe that's just how he loves. Maybe it's not about keeping score. As the weeks go by, I start to notice more of the little things Ethan does for me. He'll text me to remind me to take a break when I've been working too hard. He'll leave sticky notes with cute messages on my fridge. He'll remember that I had a stressful meeting and ask me about it later, just to make sure I'm okay. And with each small act of kindness, I feel this tug in my chest this mix of gratitude and fear. I love him, deeply, but I'm still afraid. Afraid that I'll get too used to this, that I'll start to take it for granted. And more than anything, I'm afraid of becoming the kind of person who lets someone else carry all the emotional weight in a relationship. So one night, as we're lying in bed, I finally work up the courage to say what's been on my mind for months. Ethan, can I ask you something? He turns his head to look at me, his face soft in the dim light. Of course. I take a deep breath, trying to steady myself. Do you ever feel like like I don't do enough for you? Like maybe you're giving more than I am? There's a moment of silence, and my heart races. What if he says yes? What if he's been thinking this all along, and I've just been too wrapped up in my own fears to notice? But then he smiles, reaching out to tuck a strand of hair behind my ear. No, he says softly. I don't think about it like that. I do what I do because I love you. Not because I expect you to do the same things for me. I blink, surprised by the simplicity of his answer. But don't you ever feel like I'm not pulling my weight? He shakes his head, still smiling. You show me love in your own way. It's not about doing the same things it's about being there for each other. You're always there when I need you. That's what matters to me. I stare at him, trying to wrap my head around the fact that he genuinely means it. He's not keeping score. He's not waiting for me to match every gesture or return every favor. He just loves me, without strings attached. And suddenly, I realize that maybe the problem isn't that I'm not doing enough. Maybe the problem is that I've been so used to relationships where love was conditional where affection came with expectations and strings that I've forgotten what it's like to be loved freely. In the weeks that follow, something shifts in me. I stop worrying so much about whether I'm doing enough, and instead, I start focusing on the moments we share the quiet mornings, the lazy Sundays, the way Ethan laughs at my terrible jokes. I stop trying to analyze every little thing, and just let myself be present with him. And in doing that, I start to notice all the ways I do show him love. Maybe I'm not the one making coffee or cooking dinner, but I'm the one who listens when he talks about his day, who makes him laugh when he's feeling down, who holds his hand when we're walking down the street. I'm there for him, in my own way. I still have moments where I worry, where that old fear creeps in and whispers that I'm not enough. But then I look at Ethan at the way he smiles when he sees me, at the way he holds me close when I'm feeling overwhelmed and I remind myself that love isn't about keeping score. It's about being there, in all the little ways that matter. And maybe, just maybe, I'm learning how to do that.